Hi there, my name's Lauren from Go For Growth. Today I'm going to be running through the selection questionnaire for Calderdale Council's dynamic purchasing system for home to school um, and college transport service. So I am already on the document as you can see now and there are three parts to the document which are required to be completed and a declaration following the um, actual questionnaire. The first part of the document which I am currently on that you can see at the moment is for informational purposes. Um, the first 11 pages of the document actually provide guidance to um, suppliers completing the questionnaire on which sections to complete, how to complete them, important information about your answers. So it is um, really important for you to have a read through this before you do get started answering the questions. And I um, am now going to be providing some guidance on how to answer the questions also. But don't forget to read through the first 11 pages for um, the information provided from the council on this one. Now I'm just going to skip forward to the beginning of the um, actual questionnaire, which starts on page 12. So I'm now on page 12, which is the start of the standard selection questionnaire. You'll see some um, important information before you do get started, confirming that you must answer all questions in part one and part two. And you must answer all questions in part three as well. Um, now, providers must ensure that every organisation on which they will rely to meet the selection cr um, criteria does complete and submits their own answers and declaration for part one and part two. So just part one and part two for that. Um, now, I'm going to get started on section one of the first part of the selection questionnaire, which covers your information um, as an organisation and the bidding model. So basic information regarding your organisation and how you are putting forward a bid. So question one is the name of your organisation. And if you are registered to, um, it is advised to give the name as you are registered on Companies House, that would be. Um, your registered address, again, if applicable, if you are registered um, to use the same address which is registered on Companies House um, or the head office address. Your registered website address, again, if applicable. This is one thing that I haven't covered off yet. If you see if applicable in brackets anywhere in the question, you are able to pop NA as your response if the question is not relevant to your organisation. Um, if you are unsure, um, do check with somebody else within the organisation or if you do need further guidance on the question itself um, for any of the questions in any of the um, any part of the selection questionnaire, you are able to reach out to go for growth or the contracting authority for further information. Um, so part one, then, um, other than those three questions, you're asked to confirm your trading status, the date of registration, um, and your registration number. Um, I have mentioned Companies House a few times already now, but if you do visit Companies House, you'll be able to find all of this information, including the date that you're registered and your registration number. 1.1F um, then covers your registered VAT number. And 1.1G is whether you are registered with the appropriate professional um, or trade registers specified for this procurement in the country where your organisation is established. If you are unsure, you are able to reach out and ask a clarification questionnaire, sorry, a clarification question to the contracting authority. They will be able to provide you guidance on what is required. Um, if you do happen to know and your answer is going to be a yes, you would need to provide further information in 1.1G2. 1.1H is a similar question, so um, for procurements for services only, whether it is a legal requirement in the country where you're established for you to A, B or C. Um, if again your answer is yes, you are able, um, you would need to provide additional details in um, the next box, so for 1.1H2. If you are unsure um, of the requirements for this procurement, do again reach out to the contracting authority, raise the clarification questionnaire and you will receive guidance on how to answer that one. Moving forward to 1.1i, so relevant classifications, you'll just need to confirm whether you um, classify as either A, B or C, so a VCOC, a sheltered workshop or a public service mutual. 1.1j, so whether you are a small, medium or micro enterprise, also known as an SME. If you are unsure, you are able to search the definition of an SME. Um, if you do need any um, guidance, again, contact Go for Growth and we will be able to 
by using guidance to help you understand whether you would classify as an SME or not. Um, 1.1k then um, covers details of persons with significant control. You need to provide the details listed below, including the name, date, birth, nationality, and so on. Um, if you are unsure of details of persons with significant control, again, you are able to check Companies House and you'll be able to find details of um, the persons of significant significant control within your organisation and all of the information is requested below here that I'm just highlighting now for you. Um, I have also just noticed here as well there are links at the bottom of the page um, giving definitions so um, you can find a definition of SME so whether you do classify as a small and um, medium enterprise and details also regarding um, guidance for persons of significant control. So moving on then to 1.1i, and I will also cover 1.1m um, at the same time, sorry, L, 1.1L and 1.1M. So details of your immediate parent company and details of the ultimate parent company. So again, it, the, these two questions may not be applicable to your organisation. And if that is the case, simply enter NA um, and move forward. Um, however, if you do have a parent company or an ultimate parent company, you need to provide the information requested um, below in each of the questions. So full name of the parent company um, or ultimate parent company, registered office address, that number, um, or as we've said, NA if not um, so moving forward then um, forward then this is still part of section one so it's section one continued and it is information about your actual approach to birth procurement um, so how you are planning on bidding so whether you are going to be bidding as a single supplier or as part of a group or consortium if you are bidding as a single supplier, you can move forward to question 1.3 as question 1.2 wouldn't be relevant to you. And question 1.3 may also not be relevant. Um, and if that is the case, you can pop NA for both 1.2 and 1.3. However, if you are bidding as part of a group or consortium, um, including where you intend to establish a legal entity to deliver the contract or you are a subcontractor, you'd need to provide the um, below information. So covering A, B. C, D and E, um, the same for 1.3, so if you are proposing to use subcontractors or a supply chain, you'd need to provide the, um, the below details for each subcontractor, um, so that's name, registration number, so on and so forth. However, if you're not using contract um, subcontractors, again, um, you are able to select NA. There is some further guidance here at the bottom of the page for you to read to help with that question. So I'm going to skip 1.4 then as it's not included in the selection questionnaire. And this does now actually move us forward onto part two of the selection questionnaire. Now, part two of the selection questionnaire covers exclusion grounds. So you are required to answer the questions in full um, and you are advised to note every organisation that forms part of your bidding group or consortium, um, as well as every organisation that's been relied on, including subcontractors, to meet the selection criteria, must complete and submit responses to part one and these declarations in part two. So um, exclusion ground saying that you are required to read the questions and confirm whether um, the, the question actually relates to your organisation. So whether, um, for example, your organisation has ever part, um, participated in a criminal organisation, yes or no, um, corruption, yes or no, terrorist offences, yes or no, so on and so forth. Um, I'm not going to run through every question in this section because it could make this video really quite lengthy. But if you are requiring um, any guidance um, regarding how to answer any of these questions, if you are unsure of, uh, of anything surrounding these questions, please do reach out. I will provide an email address and contact number um, at the end of this um, video tutorial and I will also pop them in the description below for you um, to reach out to us. Just going to read through to see if there's anything in particular I should cover. 
I'll move forward on to section three, which is the mandatory and discretionary grounds relating to the payment of taxes and social security contributions. Um, again, so the detailed grounds for mandatory and discretionary exclusion of a supplier for non-payment of taxes and social security contributions. These are set out in Annex D and should be referred to before completing these questions. So at the very bottom of this selection questionnaire, you will find Annex D. Um, as mentioned here, so um, the detailed grounds for mandatory and discretionary exclusion of a supplier for the non-payment of taxes and social security contributions can be found in Annex D. You will refer to me, um, sorry, hear me refer to Annex D um, a few more times probably during this video, guys. Do be aware that Annex D can be found at the bottom of the selection questionnaire. And um, before completing this selection questionnaire document, I would advise to read through Annex D um, first or maybe keep it to hand so you can refer back to it whilst answering um, the sections of the questionnaire. Um, so 3.1a then asks you to confirm whether you have met all of your obligations relating to the payment of taxes and social security contributions both in the UK and in the country which you are established. And um, you, again, it's a yes or no question, um, but if documentation is available electronically, you are asked to provide the web address, the issue and authority and precise reference of the documents. Um, 3.1 and 33 a moment 3.1b and 3.2 these two questions are only relevant if you have answered no to question 3.1a so if you have answered no to 3.1a you need to provide these details that i'm just highlighting now again if you need any further guidance please do let us know and for 3.2, again, if you had answered no to 3.1, um, you'd need to also confirm whether you have paid or have entered into a binding arrangement with a view to paying the outstanding sum, including where applicable any accrued interest or um, and or fines. And there is a note from the council below regarding um, them receiving, reserving their right to use our discretion to exclude a exclude a bid um, where they can demonstrate by any appropriate means that you are in breach of your obligations relating to the payment of taxes or social security contributions. So moving forward again now to section four. Section four covers the grounds for discretionary exclusion. And um, again, um, we are going to be referencing Annex D. So the detailed grounds for discretionary exclusion of an organisation are set out in Annex D. As we've mentioned previously, Annex D can be found at the bottom of the selection questionnaire document and it should be referred to before completing these questions. So as we've said, have a read over before you do um, complete the selection questionnaire and keep it to hand in case you need to refer back to it. So 4.1 then, within the past three years, anywhere in the world, have any of these situations summarised below and listed in the full um, Annex D applied to your organisation. So again, I'm not going to run through every one of the questions as it could um, mean the video takes um, a little too long to get through. But if you do have any questions relating to any of the um, section four questions, please do reach out and we'll be able to offer some guidance. scroll through you can see some of those one thing that i do want to run over is 4.2 um, so you are a relevant commercial organization subject to section 54 of the modern slavery act 2015 if you carry on your business as um carry on your business or part of your business in the uk supplying goods or services and you have an annual turnover of at least 36 million this first section that I have just run over, that is um, how you're able to confirm whether you are a relevant commercial organisation. So if you carry on your business or part of your business in the UK, um, supplying goods or services, and you have an annual turnover of at least 36 million, then you would be classed as a relevant commercial organisation. If not, then, then you're not a relevant commercial organisation. If you do need to chat through this with us, again, do get in touch but this um, little paragraph here is how you'd be able to identify whether you are or are not a commercial organisation subject to the section 4, um, sorry, section 54 of the Modern Slavery Act. And your answer 
to the 4.2 question will be answered based on um, whether you are or whether you are not. So we're now moving on to part three. So part three is the final part of the selection um, questions before we do move on to the declaration. Um, section five, section six, sec um, sorry, section five and section six of the um, selection questionnaire is not applicable to this procurement. So we're moving straight on to section seven, which is additional questions, including project specific questions. So the first question in section seven, which is 7.1, covers insurance. So you are asked to confirm whether you already have or whether you can commit commit to obtaining. And um, prior to the commencement of the contract, the levels of insurance um, cover indicated below. Um, so the levels of cover are employers liability insurance of a minimum of 10 million and public liability insurance a minimum of 5 million. There is a note regarding the legal requirement for certain employers to hold employers' liability insurance of at least five million as a minimum. Um, you are able to see more details surrounding this um, on the health and safety executive website. Um, link that, sorry, highlight that link for anybody that does want in, um, to access the website for more information. Moving forward now to section seven point two. 7.2 covers data protection, so you're asked to confirm that you have in place or that you will have in place by um, contract award the human and technical resources to perform the contract to ensure compliance with the UK general data protection regulations and ensure the protection of the rights of data subjects. Um, again, if you need further guidance um, surrounding 7.2, please do reach out to us, we'll help wherever we can. 7.3 and 7.4 are not applicable, neither is 7.5 or 6 or 7, so we'll just move forward there then. 7.8 again covers more than slavery, so if you remember we'd run over the um, classification um, for relevant commercial organisations, so if you are or if you did identify as a um, relevant commercial organisation in that past section, then this um, section will apply to you or if it if you didn't identify as a relevant commercial organisation previously, then it would be an NA to the 7.8 section. 7.9 covers vehicle licensing. So whether all of the vehicles that you propose to use for delivering the services required under this DPS are licensed to carry public passengers. And that is a yes or no answer. But there is a note from the contracting authority that the authority will not be able to appoint any service provider to the DPS who does answer no to this question. Now, 7.9 does actually bring us to the end of the selection questionnaire and moves us on to the declaration. So for this final part, then the contact details and declaration, you would need to read over the declaration information here. Before signing and dating the declaration here. And then providing contact details for those who are making the declarations. So that's the contact name, the name of the organisation, their role within the organisation, the contact number, email address and post of address. You can now see this does bring us to the end of the questionnaire. What I will run over just before we do end this video guide, just show you where you can find Annex D. As we'd said, it is at the very bottom of this selection questionnaire document. Um, it's a few pages long, I think it is. So page 32 to page 36. If you have any further questions covering anything that we haven't mentioned in today's video guys, please do not hesitate to get in touch. We're able to offer um, process related support and if we are unable to give you an answer, we are able to refer you um, to where you can get help from the contracting authority. Um, please, as I've said, don't hesitate to get in touch with us on um, you can contact us on email support at goforgrowth.co.uk um, or via telephone on 07 557 773 837. Thank you.